And welcome everyone to LoneStarVarsity.com. I'm Zach Long. This is Phil Torino. We are at Lowry Field at Plains Capital Park, and we are ready for the playoffs in the state of Texas as it pertains to high school football. Obviously, Phil, going to be a few games played on this field. Really going to see some nice first-round matchups, aren't we? Oh, definitely. And there's a lot actually all around the state. So everyone, the fans and the players specifically, will be doing a lot of traveling, not just here. There's some games being played pretty far out, uh, dare I say, like a Pecos. Yeah, that's about a three-hour and 15-minute trip for uh, Estacado in that case. But Hey, that's the name of the games when you come to playoffs in Texas. It's a big state. Yep. And now, as for last week, we promised some good games, and man, we were not disappointed. A lot of district titles on the line. A couple of our teams won those district titles. Other came up just short. They're still in the playoffs, but some great games for a couple district titles last week. Sure. The first one, of course, I started my preview segment by saying the following. Uh, friendship can be physical, but Amarillo is physical, and then I like the Sandys by two touchdowns. Um, I'm here in front of this audience to tell them that I was very wrong about that. Uh, the Tigers definitely deserve their due. That was an enormous win uh, to get that 2-6-A title. Uh, they were obviously undefeated, and they spoiled the Sandys' first attempt at an undefeated season in 15 years. That was a really a great showing. Absolutely. Friendship surprised a lot of people. Probably didn't surprise themselves. They expected that success, but it's key for friendship to be going into the playoffs with a ton of momentum right now. How about a few classes down? A great game between Muleshoe and Littlefield. Oh, this one was outstanding. I mean, Littlefield really looked in control of this game. Uh, their defensive front was chasing uh, chasing uh, Keegan Gonzalez around the field, and he looked very uncomfortable. Now, Gonzalez is the backup to um, Danny Campos, who is battling a lower leg injury. He's normally a wide receiver. He's really a matchup problem because it's 6'4", 190. He covers a lot of ground, and towards the end, Littlefield just couldn't quite keep Gonzalez out of the end zone enough, and that one was an excellent game, and I think both of them should be confident. Uh, moving forward. Now, Idaloo, they had a tough task to wrap up a district title. Spearman, a very good football team, but it was a good game. It was outstanding. I, I think part of it is that Idaloo, um, they shouldn't be down too much about this. I mean, Spearman was undefeated coming into the contest. And this is a case where, you know, sometimes you get those last week matchups where a team can face a squad that is, you know, at least equal to or better than who they will see in the playoffs in the first round. Um, it's not often that Idaloo in its class gets pushed around and right. out physical, so to speak. Um, um, so I think a lot, a lot of good takeaways there. Now, on to a game that we said was a do-or-die situation. Win you're in, lose you're out. And, man, did it become a scoring fest. Pampa and Leveland. Yeah, this finishes a 70-64 final with the Lobos on top. Now, in my picks last week, I said there probably wasn't a more due 3-6 and six team in the entire world than Jared Sanderson's team. And sure enough, they have their sophomore quarterback, Nick Gerber, scrambling all over the field, especially in the second half. And he combines for seven touchdowns, and Leveland slips in, which is really nice for them. Uh, because they had a lot of lapses down the stretch. Even though they played well, they weren't getting those wins. Phil, let's move on now to the task at hand, the first round of the playoffs in the state of Texas. And you have dared to separate into a couple categories here, tough games and maybe not so tough games. We're going to start with the first one, though, that will happen right here where we're sitting right now at Plains Capital Park, Monterey and El Paso Americas. Certainly, something that I had touched on a bit in our previous shows is that from when I had arrived, I had sort of gotten this notion that perhaps the El Paso schools weren't as strong as some of the other parts um, you know, of the country, of the state rather. And I tried sort of to take that with a grain of salt and not take it to heart without doing my you know, back research. And some of the El Paso teams can play. If you look at America's schedule, they've had some very tight games with competent teams. Uh, they played Permian to a very... Um, tight game as well. They were also very close with El Dorado, who is the team, of course, that right. scored five unanswered touchdowns to beat Friendship. So I, I don't think that this one will be a breeze for Monterey. And an important lesson in Texas high school football, you underestimate an opponent in the first round of the playoffs, you better ignore their record because you'll get popped. We've seen it yeah. time and time again. Another tough game for our team up I-27 here, Plainview, they get Palo Duro out of the Amarillo area. Always a tough matchup. Certainly. Now, th these two teams met in the beginning of the year, and that was a game that Palo Duro won 34-26. I'm sort of split on this one. I think that Palo Duro would be the favorite simply because of the past contest that they have had. rather. Um, however, Plainview wasn't gelling at the time right. like they are now. Warren Fly wasn't getting off as much as he is currently. They are without their starting quarterback, Paxton Oldfield, and you know we've touched on that as well, but if the running game is going like that, they may not have to throw. Yeah, their defense just going to have to be disciplined enough to keep that ground attack for Paladuro at a decent rate. If you let them get out of hand, they're going to control the clock, but Plainview on the same side, if they can control the clock with Warren Fly, 
they're going to be okay. That should be one of our better first round games. Now, Phil, these next two games you have kind of classified as maybe a little bit of an easier cakewalk, so to speak. And God, is that dangerous right now in the playoffs. But I tend to agree with you here. Let's start with the first one, shallow water and Friona. And, and coaches absolutely hate this. Uh, they yeah. hate that terminology because I think they don't want um, their kids to get it in their head. But I, I just am of the train of thought that there are realities and some teams early on cannot compete with others and that, that as the draw goes. That's just how I feel about it. Um, I think shallow water here with the play they've been getting from Weston Elliott, who right. is their backup quarterback to Chris Contreras. He threw four touchdown passes last week. That is just huge, huge for them moving forward. Now, the next game, Lubbock Cooper, their field's going to be hosting about 25 playoff games this weekend because it's a beautiful facility, but they will not be there. They've got Hereford, and they also have a week of rest under them. Yeah, I think that Hereford's in big trouble here. Uh, this is a 3-7 and seven team. I saw them uh, play Plainview um, in about mid-October. That was an easy win for the Bulldogs, and I think we know that Cooper, of course, had won that head-to-head -head with Plainview. Um, Cooper is one of the teams that we project to do very well because of their resume coming in. Slight concern, perhaps, long-term with his run defense, but uh, at least in the bye district round, I think that they will definitely you know, win this one against Hereford. And that's a team that wants to get off to a good start and kind of erase the memories of that Abilene Cooper mm -hmm. game. Still one of our strongest teams going into the playoff. You can't sleep on Cooper. They're a very good team that could still run way out in that bracket. Uh, certainly. Phil has a lot more information. We kind of just scratched the surface here. Coming up tomorrow, the picks segment we debuted last week. We love that show. Phil hits you in about a minute with all of his picks for the playoffs. So if you want to get mad or angry or embrace <laughs> Phil, that is the show to watch. You've got a tough task this week, though, don't you? Yeah, this, this one could reveal me perhaps a little bit more, the smoke and mirrors that I've been going on in that friendship game. So we'll have to see how it pans out. Absolutely. We have a lot more coverage of this first round of the playoffs in the state of Texas over at LoneStarVarsity.com, LubbockOnline.com, and, of course, all your mobile devices. For now, though, we're going to bid you farewell. This is Phil Torino. I'm Zach Long, and you're on LoneStarVarsity.com.